to begin, we would like to acknowledge that tonight's event is taking place on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of New Credit and the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee, uh, the Anishinaabe, and the Huron-Wendat. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community. Uh, I will also remind you that this film is eligible for the Girls People's Choice Award, which you can vote for uh, by going to tiff.net slash vote. And we would like to thank The Orchard and Films Boutique for providing us with this film. Uh, you all made a really great choice coming to this film tonight, uh, particularly because we do have one of the two directors here. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Christina Gallego. Uh, I don't know if you want to say a few words about uh, the film before we begin, or? Uh, no, I want to present and to introduce uh, uh, my, my colleagues and partners, uh, our, our co-producers from Mexico and from France. And I want to introduce you, uh, Nicolas Celis and Sandino Sarabia from Mexico. <laughs> and also Jean-Christophe Jean uh, Simon and Luis Basham from Prince Boutique. Luis. Luis. <laughs> and uh, yes, this is my first experience being a director. I used to be a producer, and we used to be colleagues. Uh, for, and I, was to, I, I used to be in, in that, in behind the, all the scenes of, the, of directing and of the film. And I want to thank you because when I decided to direct that film, this film, I didn't have the confidence to do that. And I was thinking that I was uh, supposed to be all the time in the supporting role. But I remember when I say to Jean Christophe some years ago, I have you a surprise. Uh, we will gonna have, we will gonna co direct that film. And he told me, Okay, it's nice, it's good. You, you, uh, all the time you have been working together and you were creating together. And I want to uh, thank you for the confidence, for giving me the confidence that I didn't have at that time. And yes, you will gonna see uh, a film uh, that is uh, obviously is my first film as a as a director, but it's also a film that talk about the the first time when Colombia started the drug trafficking, but also from a, a point of view that maybe you have seen and is what uh, was the our female point of view or our point of view uh, from this family side. Uh, I hope you enjoy the film, and we will be here at the end of the screening for the Q&A. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Please do stay and enjoy the film. Um, I would love it if we could start talking about the film just with regards to the fact that, you know, in the introduction you mentioned that this is your first directorial credit, and um, uh, I, I would love to know when you and Ciro came across the material, the screenplay, and, and how the decision came to be made for you guys to direct the film together? Uh, we knew about this history 10 years ago when we went to that, re that region uh, to make another film that called The Wind Journeys. And that film has one scene that wa uh, was uh, with the Marimbero people. And we start uh, because that film in involved also known actors I, and all the actors that were, were there uh, start to telling us these histories. Uh, and we start to know about them, about the, the things that happened in that period of time, but also know about the uh, about that region and, the, and these codes of behavior that they have there and these codes of revenge and honor. And it makes us, uh, make us a question of uh, how this film hasn't been uh, told before, mm -hmm. how this history has, uh, we didn't know nothing about this history as a Colombians. Mm -hmm. We know all of the history of the narco traffic from the uh, cinema that has been made outside, but we didn't know nothing about that. And, and also uh, a question about the taboo 
that we had in our society and in, and in the Colombian films uh, that most of the people uh, say was saying that uh, most uh, of the cinema from Colombia talk about narcotraffic or Pablo Escobar and all of this, but we realized that not all uh, that film was not made by Colombia. Was film uh, that film was made from outside, and we did never have our point of view or our perspective uh, to be uh, as uh, the main protagonist of this problem, uh, and we didn't have the feeling uh, in the cinema that we have a good re uh, representation. Mm -hmm. uh, of that theme. Yeah. And, and so, uh, uh, I forget the names of the screenwriters, but uh, were you guys involved in the, the development of the script from yes. the beginning? Yeah. Yes. We, uh, in, in this film, we hired a, a couple of screenwriters. Uh, Maria Camila uh, was the first, and uh, he came, and we uh, bring the, uh, her the idea of, of what we wanted to do, and she started to uh, make the research and, this, and the script, and something that was very nice, because when you uh, think in this in film and, and in the process, uh, maybe there's something that happened in the script writing is that Maria Camila has a very, was a, is a script writer that is very precise in the genre, but at some point we didn't look, uh, we didn't find this uh, female representation in the film. Mm -hmm. And we bring uh, Jack Tulemon, that it's a, a man, to uh, be, uh, because we have working with him in in, the, in our previous film, in the Embrace of the Serpent, and I had the feeling that he is very near to the female aspects. Uh, he brings more <laughs> uh, uh, his female point of view uh, to that film and this uh, and some connections and love that we wanted to bring in the film, and it is something that is is not a it's something that you can see or understand when 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 you are from outside. Hmm. Well, that's so interesting too because uh, the the previous film, of course, that you're referring to is Embrace of the Serpent, and um, something that that film has in common with this film that I think is so interesting is that both films use very powerful uh, and very familiar genre elements, but they do so in service of a story that gets us in touch with you know. Uh, very important parts of the, the indigenous history of Colombia that, as you were saying, I guess even Colombians mostly are not familiar with. I mean, is that, do you consider that a sort of a larger project uh, for, for you and Cito to sort of try to find a way to tell those stories in a, in a, you know, through a genre that people, you know, will? Yes, yes, yes. I think that we are trying to uh, tell, a, yes, because we are people from cinema, but looking, uh, who we are and what are our interests, but also looking the place where we born and where we came, and we are trying to uh, re, uh, re, re think of, of, of about the history that has been telling to us and thinking about what we, what we need to tell to the world. Mm -hmm. no? And this is something that is very nice when you work with the genre, which uh, you have these codes, but uh, bringing uh, from the place where you were or from the, not only the indigenous world, but also the colonized world. Mm -hmm. no? And the, the things that we feel uh, and when from we were born. Uh, we are uh, trying to give this uh, twist uh, of the genre from our point of view. You want to say something, Jan Christophe, about that? <laughs> no, uh, actually, we, I think part of the of the work we did on on the film was to try to how to say embrace so embrace of the serpent was a film very ethnographic which was really about the native people and the way they live and here the game was to play between the genres starting with something very natural with traditions and try to explain how this population now are in a kind of modernity. <laughs> I'm not sure we can really speak about modernity because the film is really playing about the fact that we we gain things but we lose a lot of things on the way and I I hope you 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 could feel that in the way the film was made. 
Uh, yeah, well, I'm sure you almost asked questions as well. I just before we do so, I just want to uh, just get back to, to this idea of uh, you were talking about this this being your first feature as director, and um, and I wonder if you or or any of you guys just could comment on on that decision and how the collaboration worked. I'm very curious to know. Uh, it was a collaboration. We I work all the time as a producer. We met with Cito 20 years ago in the school. And I think was something that mo was more involved. I, 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 when I start to be a producer, I never ask myself uh, to be a di director. I was uh, thinking that I was uh, in that uh, role to support other people. Uh, but when we made uh, the Embrace of the Serpent and we have a very strong uh, and creative collaboration and I bring many things from myself uh, to that film, I realized that I, I want to tell these histories and that that position uh, was not fair, was not represented in, in just the uh, uh, production mm -hmm. credit. Uh, and we, uh, as we start to develop this idea, uh, and we find that the difference of this film will gonna be this female point of view, and this is something that only I can bring. Yeah. Uh, all the previous Ciro's uh, uh, film as, was more in the male world, mm -hmm. and and this is something that I just can bring. And I say to Ciro, I think it's the moment. Uh, I want to direct uh, and co-direct that, that, this film, and he was very open, and and we bring our visions together, and it was very nice because it was something like a, an official collaboration, but was done before also from the backside, and I think that this is something that happens. Uh, it's very strange because all the author cinema. Uh, uh, put the figure of the director like uh, the only lead of the things, but yeah. it's something that in in the American cinema is led by the producer and the director is hired normally, mm. and and you used to to have this collaboration, but but it also make us uh, that question of okay. Uh, both were we were living together, we were with, with living all the creative aspects of the film, and and I think that it was some uh, a natural step when the people asked me about the difference. It's, it was not a, a big difference from the uh, work that I had done before. The only difference was to uh, go uh, to the set and and uh, lead uh, with Ciro together the things in the set. <laughs> Well, I, I could keep asking about that, but uh, let's open it up to the house. Uh, if you all could just uh, raise your hands and uh, and I'll repeat back the question so everyone can hear. Uh, yes, this person right here. Uh, so the question is, has to do with uh, with the with the acting, which this gentleman thought was great, and, and are the actors professionals? We mix professional and not professional actors. Uh, fourth uh, members of the family or of the main roles are professional actors. Uh, Ursula, Saida, Rapayet, and Moises are professional actors, and all the other one was uh, natural actors. And uh, we made a coach and preparation from all together during two months, uh, and was a, a process for a, a learning process. Uh, from the professional, the professional actors need to know how to be a uh, waju. And, uh, how to make mochilas. The uh, Saida was in a confinement for three days without cell phone, <laughs> <laughs> and she was uh, prepared. But the woman that you say so in the in that uh, uh, final judgment uh, from the old uh, old ones, and the the woman from in, in that scene. Uh, Prepare Saida and teach her how to how to be a Wajú woman. But uh, and they, it was a, a process of collaboration between us that we are all of us we are alihunas trying to go there and to learn uh, about them. Uh, other questions? Uh, uh, yes, right up there. Thank <laughs> you. 
Uh, so yeah, just in case anyone didn't hear, yes, uh, this gentleman was just commenting on the fact that the film is a is a pretty blistering critique of clap of global capitalism. Uh, but it, will the soundtrack be available somehow? Would the music be available somewhere for someone we to want. buy? We want. <laughs> we want. We want. Yeah. Want, yeah. yeah. Well, the, uh, it's, it's funny because uh, well, this uh, this film is a co-production with uh, Mexico um, among others, and uh, the the um, the musician who created the music is Leo Hellblum, is Mexican. Is I think is one of the. the important parts of Mexico brought in to the film and he 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 flew to um he flew uh, he flew to um, Colombia uh, he met you know the Wayus he met the musicians from the area he he learned about the you know the instruments and he created music with them based of on the on the instruments and the the kind of music that they, they do so and yet he i mean we we are discussing that he he really want to do the you know the soundtrack and we are thinking about that <laughs> yes and 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 as the promotion of of the all the film start leo uh, write me we should bring out this soundtrack and i was telling you let me bring out the film first <laughs> But yes, this is something that will be great to have at some point. Uh, yes, over there. Yes, this uh, is... Yeah, so the question is just about the style of the film and whether Garcia Marquez maybe had anything to do, any sort of influence on that and... Yes, yeah. we, we took many sources uh, to do uh, this film. One is, was the Januar movies and the Western movies, but also the work of Garcia Marquez and especially with 100 Years of Solitude. And we, when we start to do the analysis of, of this novel, uh, we, we uh, know, we knew that uh, that novel was written in what you quote. And we start to know about this, the history of Garcia Marquez because he was raised and the, uh, the servants was uh, what you. And this, all this uh, magic realism and the relation with the deaths uh, with the dreams and the and with the environment and with this thing that you can see that are non real or uh, uh, or supernatural but are, uh, really are naturals uh, yes it's one some uh, something that uh, we want to bring in the film and to and we think that it was the unique uh, way to tell this history that we wanted also to construct uh, in this uh, way of Greek tragedy, no, and it's uh, also the the style of what happened in, in one young, 100 years of solitude is uh, the story of a family that it's uh, involved in a in in a tragic destiny, and no matter what they do or what they if they make right or wrong decisions, it's a tragic destiny. I think we have time for one more question. I'll try to look up high this time to see if anyone is up there. No? Uh, let's, uh, how about uh, you over here? Uh, so the question, yeah, the question has to do with uh, the uh, uh, problems with weather, I guess, that you had in production of the film? Yes, uh, we didn't know, but we had uh, super natural special effects <laughs> in the film. Uh, and we uh, were dealing with that crew during all the pre-production and, and during the production. But uh, yes, we 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 find that place that was a desert uh, and the uh, sea was buried away 
And once we start to uh, construct all the house and the uh, rancheria and the, uh, and the town, no, the, the the town that is in the in the first part of the of the film, all all was uh, constructed. The wa uh, the water start to came uh, near 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 uh, until we had we were almost drawn. Uh, in the yes, in all, uh, all the water came, and we construct a how do you say dike? A dike to take out the water, and yes, and all but uh, all the people were saying uh, from the communities that the we have all the ancestors against us, but it was really very difficult, and we were you know, uh, uh, let's construct this dike to take out the water, and it works, but when we start to the shooting, we had a storm, a, a sandstorm over the set, and you went out uh, from the set that you saw the storm, the, the, the sandstorm just over us. And it was, uh, yes, it was very hard conditioned, but it makes the, the films more beauty. At the end, uh, all, all of these uh, weather conditions that you see at the end of the film was not plain. We have the, the two days before the end of the shooting, electrical storm in the set uh, that uh, make us, uh, uh, was impossible to come back to, to the set uh, to, to shoot and we have two more days of shooting there. So we need to rewrite uh, the end of the film and indeed was very, very uh, was a good change. Uh, and yes, uh, and, and we shoot there in four hours what we was planned to, uh, to do in, in two or three days there. But there's many things that was changing during the, because the weather and the condition and we were fighting a, a, a against uh, that, but at the end uh, it was, was the, the film better than we expect. Yeah, and the end the weather becomes a character too, I guess. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for, but thank you so much, Christina. Thank all of you for being here, and thank you for being here. And please enjoy the rest of the festival. <laughs>